you are all listening to the right radio station. If you're listening to anything else, you are listening to the dark side. Not good for you. Good, I'm glad you know me. So you've heard me on radio. You know the kind of person I am. I'm not... You're not finished yet, no, dude. Okay, go on. I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. I'm here to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, and why I believe in insurance, um, life insurance in particular. Uh, some of you may know that middle of last year I had a heart attack. I'm very glad that I had my family support, my friends, my colleagues, most of all the media. Some of you may say, how did the media support me? They stayed out of my life. Because <laughs> that's the last thing I wanted, media people going, so how was the heart attack? For the last one year, every time I meet someone, they walk up to me, they go, Flying Dutchman, hello. So how was the heart attack? Huh? How many of you have ever had a heart attack? Raise your hand. You know the pain, right? You know the pain. It is an elephant sitting on your chest. And me being macho, big time radio DJ, right? My heart attack started at 4 o'clock on Friday. I went to the hospital at 8 o'clock on Sunday. Very macho. I had a three-hour window left. If I had exceeded that three-hour window, chances are I would not be standing here talking to you. That's how stupid I was, okay? So that's the background to what, to what the heart attack was. Basically, lousy life, lifestyle, sit down, eat laksa, mee siam, nasi biryani, kick my feet up, crack jokes with Glen Ong, do no exercise, you know, Generally, a basic Singapore life. Because Singaporeans are a very unique group of people. Everybody eats to live, we live to eat. Okay? So I've gone through some lifestyle changes. But the, all day you've been hearing about investments and your portfolios and how you should invest and whatever else. I'm only here to tell you about my story with life insurance. Because without it, I would never have paid my bill. This is for all the wives here, okay? And the husbands too. If your spouse has a heart attack and you go in to an emergency room, you are going to be flustered, trust me. I saw it with my wife. And you are gonna have a hospital that's gonna go, so what kind of room do you want for your husband? Huh? Uh, you want a single bed, double bed, you want photo room, what kind of room? Meanwhile, your husband is on the table going, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You are going to go, single bed, please. Best thing for you, right? Best thing for your spouse, right? And then after that, you are slapped with a bill. That bill does not only cover your procedure, yeah? That bill covers every time you see the doctor for the next one year. Just to give you an idea, I have my final appointment next month. Every time I have seen my doctor, it has been $660. To say good morning, how are you? I'm fine. Take blood pressure, take weight, oh, you're still overweight, never mind. Do you have enough medicine? No, need some more. Okay, thank you very much. Go out, get your medicine, go home, 660 bucks. Because you were pushed into, what room do you want? Now I ask you, are you prepared for that? We all have our insurance and we all have our monies put away. But we are, are we prepared for that pressure? I'm glad I was, not because I planned for it, but because I had a financial advisor who made sure I was ready for it. The guy who handles all my money took three years to sell me his first policy. No, he was not a bad salesman. He was actually very good. It was my wife. <laughs> Why so much money? Huh? <laughs> but in the end, it paid off. From the time 
I started work till the time I was 25, 26, even 27 by the time I signed my first policy. I looked at what was then known as an insurance agent, and I went, all you want to do is take my money. I never thought it was worth anything. But this guy took three years. In those three years, he never once spoke to me about dying. Because let's face it, we all know we're going to die, right? We all know we've got to plan enough to make sure our family is all right. These are things we know. He never did. In those three years, he kept saying to me, when you're 60, what do you want to do? When you're 60, what do you want to do with your wife? When you're 60, what kind of life do you want to have? When he got all that settled, he said, so now, how are you going to pay for your children's education? I have had two daughters go through university. I swear, I have never, ever taken money out of my bank account. And they did not go to university here. They went to university overseas because he planned it. He planned it. He made sure I had the money I needed, not only for what I want to do, but for what my children want to do. And that is very, very important. When you look at that kind of person, by the way, this guy now is my best friend. We go traveling together. We sit down, we have a few drinks together. No, I, I don't drink, no, <laughs> mustn't. <laughs> don't tell my doctor. We sit down, we have drinks together. We are very close friends, very close friends. So close that if I am going to get involved in a business, I will go to him and I will say, what do you think? As a friend, what do you think? Because to find an a financial advisor is easy, yeah? There are a lot. But to find a friend you can trust, that is very special. And that's what, I want. That, that, that's what put me on the road. This man has been handling my life for close to 30 years. Close to 30 years. And you know what was special? He didn't only get to know me. He got to know the industry I'm involved in. So there would be years when he knew my industry, the entertainment industry, was taking a dip. And he would come to me and say, this year we don't do very much. It'll be too tough on you. We don't do very much. When my industry climbed, he goes, okay, it's time for you to do stuff. So he never put me in a bind. He knew how to truly manage the portfolio, which is very important. Finding someone who will work with you to manage the portfolio. It's very, very important. I think some of the things that we need to realize and how... I'm only going to give you my personal, my personal take why I trusted this man, maybe things you want to bear in mind when you start to look at financial advisors. Every time, till today, if he wants me to get involved in anything, he will never talk to me alone. He will always make sure my wife is sitting next to me. Because though it is my portfolio, he sees it as our portfolio. Because if anything happens to me, that's all hers. So she's got to understand what's there. And my wife is a very difficult person. The sky is blue. She will ask you six questions as to why. <laughs> she, will, she is the hardest person to try and get anything out of. She is, she's even more conservative than I am. But he has been very, very patient. So over these years, he's built up this portfolio where I am now in a situation where I don't have to worry should anything happen to me. And that's very important, yeah? If anything happens to you, make sure your family is covered. But I think before you get to that stage, 
and I'm looking at some of you in the room. Are you all happy with where you are now? You are? Good. I am glad you are happy with where you are now. Now, do you want to be better off when you're 60? You're not 60 yet. There's no way you're 60. Out of curiosity, Bob, how old are you? For example, I had my heart attack. It helped pay my bills. I got a lump sum of money. I won't tell you how much. But it was very good. And I was very happy. Not only that, all my policies now, I don't pay for. I have no premiums. It's all taken care of by the insurance company. So I'm just asking you, do your policies do that for you? Make sure they do. Why, after something like that, should you have the pressure of having to pay for your policies? I am very, very heavily insured. Very, very heavily insured. Okay, I have a lot of investment portfolios. I have a lot of things like that because I'm the kind of person, if the money is in my bank, I will spend it. I have very little control. I'm very bad that way. My family has eight computers in one house. Why? <laughs> because I'm too lazy to walk from the living room to the study to get a computer. I have computers all over the house. So I waste money. I do it. And this guy knew that. So he set me up such that I would be saving that money, that money would be working for me. So he has to know you. In order for him to know you, you have to trust him. That takes time. If you are conservative as an investor like I am, and if you have time on your side, and I'm speaking to the younger ones here, take your time. It will pay off for you. This is what I have learned. Yeah? Take your time. It will pay off for you. Um, the other thing that I want to tell you about is make sure that you are important to your financial advisor. Financial advisors have a lot of clients. Yeah? A lot of clients. Lots of portfolios. So does mine. But we meet every eight weeks. When I said this at an LIA luncheon a couple of months ago, I said we meet every eight weeks. Everybody went, whoa. And everybody went, oh, it's because you're a celebrity. That's why he does this. It's not true. He does the same thing with his other clients too. I know this because sometimes we have lunch. Sometimes you get together because you need to do stuff with your portfolios. Sometimes you get together just to have coffee and to talk rubbish, but he stays in contact with you all the time. Why? Because he's more than a financial advisor, he is a friend. A friend you can trust. And these are very, very important things. He not only set up stuff for me, he, when, when he started to look at my children, he said, can you, can you just leave me alone? I want to talk to your kids. So he talked to child number one, and she's off working. She's got an 11-year-old son now. And he said, well, what do you want to do in your life? And he took his notes, talked to daughter number two, and said, what do you want to do in life? Took his notes. Talked to daughter number three. Yeah, by the way, all my children are daughters. <laughs> talked to daughter number three, what do you want to do? Of course, by the time he got to daughter number four, she was really young. She goes, I don't know. So he had to set up something very general for her. Daughter number one at that time said, I just want to own my own home. Job I'm not worried about, I want to own my own home. So he came up with a plan that would help her do that. Daughter number two wanted to do journalism, wanted to go to RMIT in Melbourne, didn't want to stay on campus, wanted to have her own apartment, which was going to cost rent. And he said, okay, I'll put something together. Daughter number three, 
wanted to be an, a makeup artist, she now is, and he did that. Daughter number four is now, I'm very proud to say, a pastry chef, also arranged for. So he must know you and your entire family. This is what I got out of him. When I had my heart attack, eight o'clock on Sunday, I was in the hospital. Doctors took one look at me. In seven minutes, I was in a procedure room. 30 minutes later, I was out. Okay? One hour later, I was sitting up in bed with my family around me. One and a half hours later, my financial advisor was standing at the foot of my bed, going, now do you believe what I told you? He was absolutely right. He knew my lifestyle. He warned me many, many times. He said, go out, exercise, get yourself in shape, stop the laksa and the misiam and the this and the that, which is kind of funny because he weighs 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but he's telling me to get off the laksa. Now I'm telling him to get off the laksa, you know. But he knew that I had a problem and I wasn't doing anything about it and I wasn't listening to advice, so he prepped me for it. He prepped me for it. And I'll tell you something else that was really very, very cool. You know when you have something like this, you need to get doctor's reports later to make your claims, right? Sometimes, and this is a trick I'm going to teach you if you ever have to go in the hospital, your, ins your, your financial advisor can submit the forms, but did you know that if you want to get those forms back quicker, you submit the form. You do it you will get the form back quicker than if your financial advisor submits it. Don't ask me why. But I, when I did it, I got my form back in seven days. I asked four other people in MediaCorp who had gone through the same thing with me. 21 to 28 days. Again, they said, you're a celebrity, that's why. But seriously, when you get into a system, Mark Van Kylenberg, who the hell do they know? Yeah, they don't know who you are. It doesn't say Flying Dutchman on the form. You know, if they said Flying Dutchman, I would expect two days. <laughs> I would expect it immediately. Give me the form. Yeah, there you go, right back. You know? But these are little tricks you learn. Tricks that he taught me, yeah? He taught me. Very interesting. So what I say to you is, because of what's happened to me, learn the lessons. Make sure you are in continuous contact with your financial advisor. Make sure he is more than just someone who looks after your portfolio. He must be someone who looks after you. That is what is important. Yeah? The idea of Buying life insurance, it's a necessity. You, you got no choice. Believe me. MediSave, MediShield, <laughs> ain't going to do much good. I'll tell you, by the time you claim, it ain't much. Okay? You're going to need a lot more. And mine was a stent, yeah? Imagine what had happened if the, if the hospital had gone, what kind of bed, what kind of bed, what kind of bed, what kind of bed? And my, my, my wife goes, single bed, boom, open heart surgery. How? Huh? Then how? Because that's what they'll do. And are you prepared for it? It's all about being prepared for it. I know it sounds like common sense. I know some of you are sitting there going, yeah, I know all this. I know you know. Have you done anything about it? Especially the younger ones here, because the younger you are, the more affordable it is to get it done. Even down to little things. I discovered after my heart attack, 27 DJs on English programs in Mediacorp, 11 have hospitalization. 
only 11. Damn, how are you going to pay for it if anything happens? Really? How are you going to pay for it? Installments, huh? But then in installments, you know, it becomes like everything else in Singapore. You know, everything is on installment. Your house is on installment. Your car is on installment. Half the things in your house are on installment. Now your heart operation is on installment. Which, and what, is that, what does that installment do? That puts pressure on you for the next umpteen years. When, when you should be getting rid of that pressure and not adding to the pressure that we already live under. We all live under immense pressure. You should be getting rid of that pressure. And that pressure can be taken away by the right investments, by the right insurance. It's very, very important. By the, make, and make, make sure that your insurance is, is correct. I have, for example, life policies. I have one policy that's just paid out. I have another one that comes to me at 62. Another one that comes to me at 75. Another one that comes to me at 80. Why did I do that? Because what am I going to do if I live to 90 and I got all my money at 60? Am I going to have enough money at 90? The way inflation works? Who knows? The way the economies work? Who knows? So together with him, we worked out this system. I'll tell you another thing he did. My daughter's endowment policy paid off three months ago. He knows my daughter. He said, this one, no money control. You give her the money, it's gone. And unfortunately, he's absolutely right. So what did he say? He said, what do you want to do about that? I said, I've got to keep that money for her for later. So he said, okay, but she's going to want something from it now, right? So I said, yes. So what did he do? He took two thirds of it, which she will get back 15 years from now, and gave the rest to her. Because if he had given it all to her, she's exactly like me. Ten years from now, nothing left. And what would happen then? Daddy, money come. <laughs> Daddy would have told her, go jump in the lake. <laughs> but this is what I mean by getting a financial advisor who understands who you are, what you are, and what you expect. Financial advisors are easy to find. The right one. You know, it's like getting the right fit. You know how you get a fit? I'm sure you know. You get a fit with your investments, correct? There must be a fit with your investments. There must be a fit with your financial advisor. Make sure you have a fit. If you have that fit, you're safe. It's very, very important. Yeah? I just don't want anyone to end up, as I have seen with other people that I have met, because I do a lot of work with, with the Heart Foundation and people like that now, where people are literally scrimping and scratching and digging for money to pay those installments. Because they can't afford it. They can't afford it. I'm a firm believer that, that a lot of us want to live the good life, yeah? I'm a firm believer that a lot of Singaporeans tend to push themselves a little too far to have the good life. And then when something goes wrong, pew, because they pushed in other areas and they've forgotten about the insurance. A life policy is very good it is not enough. It is not enough. You need to make sure that your money comes, money that you put in comes back to you. You need to get the right investment so that money comes back to you at different times so that you're prepared. You have got to make sure 
that if anything unforeseen happens to you, you are covered completely for that. It is awfully, awfully important. Many of us think that it'll never happen to me. How many people in the room have high cholesterol? Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. Come on. Very good. How many of you are taking control for that high cholesterol? Very good. How many of you think you may have high cholesterol? Dare not put up your hands, right? How many of you eat laksa once a week? <laughs> Chances are you got high cholesterol, dude. <laughs> it is the number one sin. Laksa is the number one sin. Okay? Things like high cholesterol. If you work in a pressured job, a lot of you don't see radio as a pressured job. Imagine sitting behind a console, talking to 660,000 people at any one time, and not knowing who they are. Not really knowing what they want at that moment in time, but having to deliver. It is a pressure job. Because where we work, our morning show is responsible for $17 million a year of media court money. Two people responsible for $17 million of media court money. That's an awful lot of money. Yeah? So I have learned now, after my heart attack, because before my heart attack was, we've got to make sure we don't lose anything. I've learned now to pull back. There's only so much I can do. After that, media corp, sorry lah. <laughs> you go and find out how you're going to do it. I can only do so much. I don't have very much more to tell you other than please know what you want for your future. Know how you want to live your future. Make sure you are prepared for any un foreseen circumstance. It may be health, it may be anything. It could be anything. Just make sure you're prepared for it. You have to be prepared for it. And the person who will get you prepared for that is your financial advisor. He is crucial. I would hate to have lived my life without a financial advisor because I would not have done, I would not have known what to do. Seriously. If I did not have a financial advisor who explained crisis cover to me, I wouldn't have known what crisis cover is. But it is because of crisis cover that I no longer have the huge bill that I used to have paying my premiums. How much do you reckon, did anyone here, can you figure out what I used to pay in premiums in one year? My wife, three daughters, the fourth one all cleared already. My wife, three daughters, and myself. Sorry? 10,000. Sorry? 30. $52,000. I used to spend $52,000. Paying my premiums, <laughs> which my wife said, you're mad. But now, I, now she looks at me and goes, smart move. Smart move. Especially after the check came in, after I had my heart attack. When the check came in, she went, yeah, smart move. <laughs> Straight away, she went on holiday, left me here. <laughs> it's true. It is true. I had the heart attack. I took five weeks leave. On the sixth week, my wife went to Paris. I was back at work. What the hell? But I don't care. In August, I'm going to London. She's staying here. I figured tit for tat. What the hell? You know? But you see, you see what I'm trying to say? 
You, you need to be prepared. Sometimes it seems like a lot of money. It seems like a lot of money, what you're spending on your insurance. But at the end of the day, it is that what if. Can you live with the what if? I am glad I had a financial advisor who said, don't run the risk. And I'm telling you, don't run the risk. Okay? It is no joke. It is no joke. Anything happens, everything falls back on your family. Are they in a position to take that burden? Really? Especially if you are a young family, are they in the position to take that burden? If you are a much older family, are they in the position to take that burden? With all your other expenses that they have, home, car, whatever, What's it? Home, car, country club membership, some credit card. All the things Singaporeans do, right? Are they in a position to take that responsibility on? In many cases, they are not. But because you're not prepared, it falls to them. So all I'm going to leave you with, ladies and gentlemen, is be prepared. Find a fit with your financial advisor. Learn as much as you can. When you deal with them, the one lesson I learned from my wife, when you deal with a financial advisor, no question is a stupid question. If you don't understand it, and it takes 20 questions for you to understand it, you have the right to ask 20 questions. Don't go, oh, I'm going to sound very silly. This must be okay. Sign. Know what you're signing. Know what you're signing so you know what it gives you. Everything you must know. Your spouse must know. Don't leave your spouse in the dark. Your spouse must know what your money is doing for you. Please make sure you do that, okay? That's about all I have to say to you. The only other thing I say to you is, eat healthy, please. Don't drink and drive, especially if you're driving behind me. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. There is a little, there is a little video we're going to play. I'm very proud of this little video. They took my little heart attack and turned it into a cartoon. We wanted to put it on the Cartoon Network, but they said no. So here we go. This is me and my little heart attack. The ambulance crew were doing everything they could to keep me conscious. By the time they got me into the procedure room at the hospital, the pain was incredible, really, really unbearable, like an elephant sitting on my chest. My wife and daughters couldn't see me. They didn't really know what was going on, so it was so tough for them. I'm just gonna try and get a plane ticket and fly tomorrow. The doctor ran a stent through my body up to my heart, which opened up the blockage. And suddenly, the pain was gone. Just like that, they saved my life. I feel good now. Of course, I need to watch what I eat. And I exercise every day, but other than that, everything's back to normal. And I like that. I don't like pity. I'd much rather hear, hey, give chance, la, don't walk so fast. That's much more encouraging than pity. I'm also feeling so positive because I'm thankful I had insurance coverage. You see, to me, insurance is about two things. How much money I leave behind when I die, and how I can afford medical care. My insurance advisor helped me secure funds for a rainy day, which is so important as it gives See me See what I mean about my financial life. advisor? Because of his advice, I have a life policy with a crisis benefit that covers even unexpected things, like my heart procedure. Thank goodness for that.